Hear now the word of the Lord as it is found in the book of Acts, chapter 16, verses 9 through 15. Hear now the word of the Lord. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia pleading with him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samothrace, the following day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city in the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath, we went outside the gate by the river, where we supposed there was a place of prayer, and we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Thyatira and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Once again, let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in, use, in your sight, O God, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Just when you think you have things all figured out, someone or something changes your plans. Getting ready to go to a friend's house for dinner and your car starts with a heinous rattle that sounds like the whole car is going to explode. Thankfully, you have some options. You can take another car, call for a taxi, or catch a bus. At the office, you are just about to implement a new project plan. And then you are told that the funding has been cut in half. It is time for some creativity. At home, you're completing a paper for school, and the printer runs out of ink. Ugh. If you started ahead of time, you would say, well, what time does the store close? But most likely, when does the store open? Or a quick text, hey, can I print out my paper on your printer? Believe it or not, Surprises also happen in ministry, especially when you think that everything is going to plan. Well, Paul and Silas also ran into a change of plans. At this point in our preaching series on Acts, we have fastened our seatbelts ready for whatever God would do next. Okay, now's the time to pull out the map. And everybody should have a map if you don't share with your neighbor. And I want you to follow along, so please bear with me. Because it is very important to know your ministry location. And then if you go back and read from like chapter 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 in Acts, oh, so they went this way, and then they went that way, and then they went this way. So, bear with me. The map that you have is of Paul's second missionary journey, which is the topic for today. But to set the scene for the second journey, we want to take a quick look at where Paul and Barnabas were in his first missionary journey. So they started off in Antioch. So if you go to the right-hand side where it says Syria, with an arrow up there is Antioch. 
And then they went to Cyprus, went all the way through Cyprus to the other end, and then went up to a place across the ocean into what we know as Asia Minor, Italia. And then they go to Antioch. Well, that's a different Antioch. That's Pisidia. And then they went to Iconium, then Lystra and Derby, and back through those towns again to get a ship in Italia to go back to Antioch in Syria. When you go back and you read in Acts, you'll see that the cities had very different responses to the word of the Lord. So for Paul's second missionary journey, Paul is traveling with Silas. Well, why another name? Well, Barnabas has taken Mark with him to go back and visit the churches in Cyprus. Paul and Silas go to the churches they established in Asia Minor. Now, they also visit Lystra and Derby, and that's where they pick up Timothy. And you'll recognize the name Timothy because Paul wrote letters to Timothy, which are later on in the New Testament. So all of this is connecting in. I just love it. So thank you for bearing with me. The band of missionaries, Paul, Silas, and Timothy, were following God's direction and strengthening the young churches. But God forbids them to go into the Roman province of Asia, which is inland from Ephesus. It's in that part where the arrow goes around. So they avoid that area. And then God tells them not to go to the northern provinces near the Black Sea. And realize that the direction not to go a place is very specific to this particular journey. So don't take that as, okay, we're never going to go to those regions of the world. But you know, if it were me, I would be terribly confused. Because here we have the gospel. It's great news. It's wonderful news. We're to spread the gospel, but we can't go there. We can't go there. Okay. We'll just go straight ahead. And when they get closer to the coast, they don't get any instructions to go to Mysia. They, in fact, they don't go there, so they don't go there. This is getting to be a real head scratcher, isn't it? But God has an amazing way of getting us to where we need to be. Even in seemingly simple things. You know, sometimes you just get a nudge or a sense of, hmm, I hadn't thought about that. Seems kind of crazy, but it's a nudge that just does not go away. There was a woman who was in town for a conference. She met up with a group of people to go to a local shopping center during the afternoon break. Now, the shopping center had a bookstore, which was one of her favorite places to be. But there was also one of those fancy candle shops and many other attractions. And for some reason, the fancy candle shop caught her eye. So she went in, but all of a sudden, she did not feel well. And so she went back to the bookstore, just looking for a place to sit down. Soon she felt better and was on her way out of the store when a younger woman stopped her and said, excuse me, but I believe that God has a message for you. It was a message of hope in the midst of that woman's great personal struggle. You never know how God is going to work, but God puts you in the places you need to be. Paul and company decided to bypass Mysia and go along the coast to Troas. And it is there that Paul had a vision. 
A man of Macedonia was pleading with him, saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. This was all Paul needed to board the group onto a ship to cross the Aegean Sea. So how do you get to that point in your faith journey, in your life, because the two are integral, where you can actually sense the Holy Spirit guiding you? Does it happen like all the time? There is no specific timeline, and most likely it doesn't always happen every single hour of every day. In fact, a missionary friend told me that if it does happen, you better listen. Not in a watch out, you better listen, punitive kind of way, but rather you have the opportunity to be a part of what God is doing. And God doesn't give you a message or direction just for the sake of it. God has something in mind that we are not capable of predicting or seeing. So we are left with needing to have a heart that is open to God. We think of Cornelius earlier in the book of Acts. His heart was open to God. And so Peter went and shared the good news with him. And the Holy Spirit descended upon the household of Cornelius. They were open to the work of God. In the Gospel of John, chapter 3, Jesus spoke to Nicodemus and said, The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. The Spirit of God is not something that we can control, thankfully. We can only be open to God's working. But you know, we do have a habit of trying to control everything. And we can run into trouble because when we categorize Jesus as a thing to be controlled and not a person, our faith can become dusty and dry, and such thinking is a form of idolatry. We turn Jesus into stone, or even just like a book on a shelf. We turn Jesus into a thing that exists far away from our everyday lives, maybe like an old stuffed teddy bear that we loved as a child. We remember the stories of our old friend. But could you really say that you have a relationship with that old cuddly bear? Oh, it may be in the attic somewhere, or maybe the dog chewed it up. Eh, toys are for children anyway. Is there a grown-up version of Jesus? Well, the disciples were more than familiar with the grown-up Jesus. They were witnesses to his life, death, and resurrection. They received the gift of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost. Paul was also a witness. You cannot deny the reality that Jesus lived. So Paul, the disciples, and the followers of Jesus became witnesses to the living Lord. And we, too, are witnesses to Jesus Christ, the Lord of all creation. Yet even with that, sometimes all we see in Jesus is a free get-out-of-jail card. There is no give and take, no open heart to hear what the scriptures reveal about Jesus. No ongoing transformation in our lives or in the lives of those around us. We have everything figured out. But sadly, we have missed the point. A relationship with Jesus is not a once and done thing. 
like a check mark on the list of how to become a member of the church or how to be a nice person. Jesus Christ is the Lord of all creation. Jesus is the self-giving of God. Now, if someone like that was in the hospitals today healing people or maybe running a never-closing grocery store in the food deserts of our country or teaching incredible things about God and our relationship with others, wouldn't you at least be curious? Who is that person? Where did he come from? What inspires him? What gives him the strength to keep going? Where did he get all these ideas? Where did he get all this power? And here's a very strange thing. How does he know me? And that's where we connect to Jesus. Jesus not only knows us, he accepts us, loves us right now, wherever we are. How can this be? Because I know at times I am really unlovable. Who is capable of loving in that way? Who would literally sacrifice themselves for me? Jesus is the self-giving of God. Jesus is not a thing or a childhood memory or a means only to make us happy. Jesus is the Lord of all creation, one in whom we can have a relationship through the Holy Spirit. Take Jesus off the shelf, if only in our hearts, and realize that when we pray, we pray to the one who loves us, redeems us from death, and transforms us. When we read the scriptures, we are interacting with God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God wants us to grow in our faith to make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that Christ has commanded the disciples. God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are in the transformation business. So keep open the line of communication to your heart to be a part of the amazing ways of God. Paul and his group, having gone to Philippi and it being the Sabbath, went out looking for a place of prayer. They were definitely in Gentile country. There was no synagogue. Yet they went to where the people gathered to pray. Lydia, a worshiper of God, heard them speak. She was a businesswoman, a dealer in purple cloth. Paul preached, and scripture tells us that the Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what Paul said. When we look at a map, it's different from how Paul would have looked at going from one Roman province to another. Today, we look back see the continent of Asia, and then the beginnings of the continent of Europe. Lydia was the first follower of Jesus in the continent of Europe. It makes you wonder if her prayers were the ones that shaped the vision of the man of Macedonia to plead with Paul for help. We do not know for certain, but we do know that God answers prayer. The plans that Paul made were changed by God, but he was open and attentive to God. As the body of Christ here at MPC, we also need to be attentive to God. 
ready to follow wherever God leads us, even if it does not make sense to us at first. The amazing ways of God can lead us into surprising places. And we may even find that people are already there waiting for us. Amen. <laughs>